logic of quant five statements. And previously we know that relation and or than and if and only if. But you have to think about some uh, quantifiers and predicates for further improvement on the logic side. And all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Socrates is a mortal. It's the famous example for philosophy. And some philosophers start with the, like Emmanuel Kant. Uh, first thing uh, we have to complete the logical entry and logic foundation of the philosophy and this is a famous example. We have to define the logic rules and symbolic logic. Of course, uh, all philosophers start with the logic. This is predicate calculus. Formerly, we, in the chapter 2, we, we have seen the statement calculus or proposition calculus. It's a little bit different, right? What's predicate? Okay, it's a good question. Try to answer. Um, try to understand, of course. Normally, predicate is uh, to get rid of the, the subject and some other nouns, pronouns, or whatever that is given in the sentence. Then you left with the predicate, okay? It's almost the action part of the sentence. Now, in mathematics, it's different, a little bit different. And we will talk about Px and Qxy, right? X, Y, uh, Y are predicate variables, and P is normally stand for uh, the domain, and Qxy is the, what you get is the result. And predicate is a sentence that contains finite number of variables becomes a schema specific variables are substitute for variables. Domain of the predicate variable is a set of all y's that might be substituted in the place of the variable. And this is a careful replacement and substitution process. Whatever the domain has, how many numbers or how many uh, discrete values, it, it, Every one of them should be checked precisely. And we have to take care of the true and false statements. For example, x squared is greater than x. It's true for uh, x is equal to 2. And x is equal to 1 over mi minus 1 over 2. But uh, on the other hand, it's false for 1 over 2 only. Positive value of 1 over 2 is giving the false treatment. Why? Uh, x has domain D, uh, Px mainly is the, it's about the domain, or set of all elements in the domain. Uh, on the other hand, Px true when they are substituted for x, truth set is shown like that. Now this is the truth set. But we have to check every element of the domain, not just one of them. For example, finding factor of 8, right? Z plus all positive or Z all integers. In the case of all positive integers, it's very easy. What's the factor of 8? 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 8, just like that. That's it. Very simple. And uh, all integers, including the negative one, of course, and we have to add them up 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8. Also, the, the factor of uh, into the eight. When you multiply mi minus one and minus eight, you will get eight. When you multiply minus two with minus four, you will get eight. A kind of factorization. Quantifiers is start with the universal statement. Um, what does the universal? It covers everybody and every generic name or every generic instance. For example, every human being X is mortal. Or for all X, this uh, symbol is for all X in the set of all human beings. This is the 
Tan X is mortal. This is the uh, proposition. So universal statement is coming from the domain. If I true, if I only if Qx is true for every x in B. This is the way we check it. This one x is not uh, satisfying this relation or truthness. Then counterexample comes out and uh, value of the uh, this predicate goes to the false, right? Exactly. Okay, well, if this is the statement and this is the uh, this is P, this is Q. Show that this statement is true. Already? I don't think so. Oh, this one is true. But the counter is true. Well, let's check it out, right? One by one. One square is greater than or equal to one is true. This is not true. Uh, this is two square, three square, four square, and five square is true. It's true. Uh, part A is true, right? Uh, well, how can we find if this is the real number, not the domain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but every real number for all x element of real number? So, take 1 over 2 and square it up, we will obtain 1 over 4, is not greater than or equal to 1 over 2. So, this is falsifying our method of expression, our counterexample of an uh, existential. Now, there exists not satisfying this statement, uh, predicate statement, that gives the false right. So, let's come to the existential part 5. When we talk about your grade in the class, it is existential quantifier because your grade is belongs to you. No. There exists 39 is belongs to you. P is student in any, any student, right? Could be if 39 or 40 is your grade. Doesn't say anything, but there exists a person like you. I mean, you're great. And since the Qx is the predicate and B is the domain, existential statement is existential statement. The statement that exists x element of domain such that Qx is satisfied. It's defined to be true if I'm only if. But this one x in B goes existential, not inverse, right? The opposite of the universal, the opposite of the problem, because existential is only one is enough and only one is satisfied, this is it. But you couldn't find the only one or existence of one point, then you will get false in this statement. Consider m squared is equal to m. When you take the domain, for this projector, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's check it out. I squared up. No, no one is equal to its square, right? But only, only is true. Z plus. What, what does it mean? Z plus. Z plus is positive integer. Yes. Of course, one is the positive integer. Then one square is equal to 1 for, as positive integer, right? So this is true. That exists means only one satisfactory uh, statement, and it's provided by 1. Then it's, that's, that's it. Part A is true, but part B, no way. Part B is completely false, because 5, 6, 8, 7 is 5, 6, 8. Uh, 7 is not satisfying this equation. And this is the formal language. All real numbers have no negative squares. All real numbers have squares that are not equal to minus 1. There is a positive integer 
squared equal to itself or some positive integer to this r squared, etc. It's the uh, mathematical terminology. Trailing quantifiers could be uh, structure of the sentence is very important. You have to put the for all at the beginning and satisfying all everything until the comma sign, right? For all triangles, T, comma, T has three sides. Okay, this is good logical step. Or for all t element of capital T has three sides, right? Is the set of all triangles. Both are valid. For all dogs, T does not have wings. Or for all the element T and dogs, T does not have wings. So it could be possible. Just covering everything here. But there exists P such that P is structure. Uh, in where P is the set of all programs. Yeah. It could be any different translation. Universal condition system for all x, it takes time to x. This is the way. If P number is greater than 2, then it's squared greater than 4. For example, this is the universal state of condition. We did the conditional thing in the previous chapters. I hope you, you got it and try to understand. This is the different topic about the validation of uh, multipurpose and multivariable version. Negation uh, of for all is, of course, there exists. And only thing you have to take care of is the predicate should be negated, right? This one. So negation of for all is there exists. And don't forget this negation of the predicate conclusion. Your statement, if all are, then you will get at least one is not. That is not, okay? This is the strange negation relation. Or, vice versa, uh, when you negate the there exists, you will get for all. Still, you have to negate the Vx. Okay? Vx could be a sort of uh, predicate consequences or any uh, information regarding the value of the statement. None are all or not is the negation. This is the famous example. All primes p is odd. Of course, this is valid only and prime number is greater than two. And that there exists a prime p such that p is not odd. Yeah, we do have is two. Um, and when you negate them, this is true, unfortunately. Because there is a prime. Then this if this is true, this is false, yeah. You know that? Because the negation. There exists a prime number p such that p is not odd. Which is which is this one is number two. So this is true and this is false then. That's it. You can do it multiple cases. When you choose predicate, then you have to use the and conjunction. This is the domain, you have to use the uh, that exist statements or for all. You have to use and for existential one that exists one. You have to use the or connection. What does it mean contrapositive? Yeah, 
change the reverse, reverse the condition. If P is Q, P is like Q, then you have to replace it like this one or this one. And reverse conditioning, it's very famous with the, uh, some other things. You have to reverse the condition. Put the negation here and not use the exact values here. But this is contrapositive, this is converse. What does in inverse? Inverse means no changing the condition or reversing the condition, just no substitution, but just negate them, okay? Just negate them. Only negate here, you can see the relation. Condition, conditional reversion is here, yeah, right? Reverse condition here, contrapositive and converse. As an example, if x greater than 2, then x squared is greater than 2. Contrapositive. You re reverse this and negate them. When you negate the greater than, you will obtain less than or equal to. When you get greater, you will obtain less than or equal to. Uh, this is true. If the square of green number is less than or equal to that, that, that number is less than or equal to 2. Converse means we are keeping the uh, QP and Q, but just reverse the condition. And that's it. Very simple. And inverse, just take the integration of this one. That's it. That's the sufficient condition is the if and only if case. When you, if Rx then Sx, this is sufficient. When you reverse this one from S to R, this is necessary. Yeah, it's here we go. Solutions and examples. Multiple quantifiers and multiple purpose and multiple value values. And uh, every non zero real number has reciprocal. There is a real number with no reciprocal. And you have to translate to the mathematical example size with like this one. For all non-zero real numbers u, there exists a real number v such that their multiplication is one. This is the definition of reciprocity. This is the definition of zero. And small positive integers, small positive real number, you should work on it. The definition of it is that so strange, right? For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an integer. And capital N such that all integers small n with n greater than capital N then satisfying interval condition. Then we have a definition of limit. If we have it, we have the limit. But be careful about for all epsilon is greater than zero. There exists a capital N. Classical definition of the limit. This is these two together, very well, well known, and you will see a lot in mathematics. All right. Now, chapter three point four. One section. If some property is true for everything in the set, then it's true of any particular thing in the set, from whole to the parts. This is very important. Same example and the other ones. This is the famous exponential rule. Um, this is the way you can prove it. Or continue with that, skipping some parts. Test for validity is easy there. It's very integer is the subset of the rational numbers. Everybody knows that, right? When you write the integer, 4 over 1 is the rational number. 5 over 1 is the ratio. All right, 
this is a strange case. Mortals, we know the human are mortal. Major premise, but minor, Zeus is out of the cell. Now you can understand. Zeus is not human or is not mortal. You have other Venn diagram examples. You should work that Venn diagram is very important for your students, for your future students and for you. Well, this is the elementary number theory. You have to be able to talk about the whole numbers like integers. Rational numbers, integer fractions, or truth and falsehood of any mathematical statement. This is the floor value, etc. is in a work that example for an exercise. Direct proof, it's very simple. No, uh, basic algebra and three properties of. Equality if a is equal to a and if a is equal to b and then b is equal to a. If a is equal to b and b is equal to c, this transitive property is a equal to c. Properties of equality and this is very important definitions for field and for field and the other things. Close under addition. Set of all integers close under addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but not division. This means that sums, differences, and products of integers are integers. Sums, differences, and products of integers are integers. Of course, most quotients of integers are not integers. For example, 3 divided by 2 is a rational number and is not an integer. Three divided by zero is not even number. Even a number is another number, NAN. Definitions. N is even, there exists an integer k such that N is equal to 2k. N is odd, there exists an integer k such that N, 2k plus 1. This is the way you can define evenness and oddness. It's very important. But think about it. Is zero even? Yeah. Any integer, it's written here such that an integer k is zero can be written as two, two times zero. 301, two times minus one, five, one, uh, 151 and plus one is okay. This is satisfying 2k plus one. All right. Six is even. So even times any number would be even. If integers, what can you see that is it can be written two times something, this is even, plus one is odd, right? This is odd number. Uh, is every integer either even or yeah, this is it could be assumption or axiom, but there is no way there is no other way around. Of course proof is not obvious, but we know that. Caution reminder theorem, right? Oh, yeah, very important part of the course. And this week, atoms. What does in atoms? Atoms is the structural uh, cornerstone of the material. Then you can build something on it. So, prime numbers are the atoms of the number theory. And what does it mean? Every Possible number can be introduced or reconstructed starting from the prime numbers. So prime numbers is a very important part of the number theory. It's very basic definition. If and only if n greater than one, and for all positive integers R S, um, if n is equal to R S, then either R or S equals to n. An integer n is non positive only if n greater than one. And uh, R and not equal to each other, or S and not equal to each other. 
If you have two factor, this is, cannot be prime. Either one of two factor is one or equal to the n, right? How can it be equal to the n? Well, the other one should be one, right? And all possible R S n and then either R equal to one or S equal to n or R equal to n and S equal to one. This is the way we, we can talk about prime. The rest of it is composite. Prime numbers are very important for uh, Riemann conjecture as one million dollar price for you if you can solve it. It's very important. And prime numbers are the basis for the all musical notes, for all instruments, in Western musical style, of course. Um, Counter example is an important part of the, this proof. Mm. Well, what does it mean counter example? When you find someone not satisfying the logical statement, you can talk about this is the counter example and the proof is cannot be done. It's this proof. This proof by counter example is used a lot in mathematics. Okay. Because this proof statement form of for all x is uh, for this proof, we need at least one example is not satisfying this. For example, this one, uh, for all real numbers, a square b squared then a is equal to b. But we know that for negative numbers, this is not true. So, this is only one counterexample enough to say this is not proven, this cannot be proven, this is uh, this is wrong and false statement. Now this one more example is about four hundred times this. Uh, we can say if n is even and n can be written as sum of two prime numbers as given here. You see that? Okay, this is easy because we have limited numbers of uh, equation here, we can add them up and find the uh, intervals and we reside in this interval. Okay, it's easy. How about all integers? Oh, this is difficult now. We cannot prove very easily. This is very difficult project. Think about all even numbers can be written by two prime numbers. This, uh, its proof is very complicated. I don't think so. It's, it's been done by uh, any mathematician. It's a good example, generic, uh, in particular, or generalizing to generic numbers or variables. When you do that, uh, please work on this example we discuss in the class. Very important one. Sometimes, uh, even colloquial questions in between some non-mathematic people is very important. But the important thing, when you work on it, you will see that you are drawing a general conclusion from a particular but generic object. What does it mean generic? Generic means sharing all common characters of group of class. X is a real number. Okay, X is a generic number. Equal to any other. If when you prove for X, is any real number, then you prove for all real numbers. This is the way you prove direct proof. Okay. Method of direct proof is just start the proof by supposing it's a particular but arbitrary choice m of t and hypothesis is true, then try to prove it conclusion is true by using definitions or established results, whatever you use it. Straightforward is direct proof. Uh, existence of instantiation is part of the uh, sometimes as a part of proof you can use it but this is not formal proof when, when you talk about these kind of things formal proof is not written but this is formal proof okay very important the way you write the proof, it's 
Well, it looks like programming language. This is the formal proof. The sum of n to even integer is n. Okay. Everybody can do that. 2r and 2s is even number. So it's two even integers, right? But after this, substitution and factoring out. This is very important. When you factor out 2, you will say this is 2t and this is a deduction. If this is the even by multiplication with 2 and this end of proof. So, the proof is partially given by this m is equal to 2 and to s. Not enough to uh, conclude that this uh, statement, but every time you have to write it down carefully. Each substitution h factoring out or the other rules until you get the result. And every line you have to put some explanations. Otherwise, your proof won't be complete and nobody will understand that. What is QED? Quad error must random. This has been worked. It means quite easily done. End of proof or reactions of writing proofs, universal statements. Copy the statement of theorem, put on your paper, clearly mark the beginning of your proof with the word proof, like theorem. Proof, semicolon, make your proof self contained, write your proof in complete grammatically correct sentences. Your reader, before they was still like programming algorithm rules, give a reason for its assertion in your proof, and uh, include the little words and phrase that make logic of your arguments clear. Display equations and inequalities, very important part. On the other hand, common mistakes are giving from examples. Just two, two, giving two, three examples is nothing for the proof. You have to do it properly. Using the same letter two for different variables is a common mistake. Jumping conclusion without saying anything. Circular reasoning. And this is totally useless. Confusion between what is known and what is still to be shown. This is the important hierarchical decision making. It's every time you have to put one more idea, one more idea, one more idea. You cannot say everything in one word or one sentence or one statement. You have to do it clearly step by step. This is difficult to understand, difficult to apply because uh, the way you think is very opposite of this structured way and step-by-step -step thing, especially in, uh, at the beginning as the uh, first year of college or university student. You try to understand step-by-step -step and structured thing. Every line you have to give one more uh, rule, equality, inequality, or some uh, related document and related logical establishment rules, etc. Whatever you got it. But you have to do it step by step. And don't use any, but just try to use some. Instead of because, don't use if, because if is uh, confusion with the logical statement. And especially formal statement domain, hypothesis, and conclusion is very important. Starting point, conclusion, and proof. This is very important. You have to be structured writing. When you write theorem, domain, hypothesis, and conclusion, and in this way, starting point and conclusion to be shown, etc., and proof, semicolon, it's very important. This is the structure. When you do it once, don't forget it. This is the uh, Formal proof in the uh, your article, your uh, exam paper, whatever you do, right? Starting point, conclusion to be shown, and proof with semicolon. Okay. And conjecture proof and disproof. 
This is the most important question. What is conjecture? Please try to answer this question in the class. Because it's a new word. Yeah, try to learn this one. Uh, we will work on it. For example, pharma conjecture, 350 years later, sold by Andrew Weiss, and which is published in 1995. And it's proposed in 19, uh, uh, sorry, 1660s or 1640s. This is so strange, right? Goldbach conjecture is the same, every even integer. Chamber of San. More than 250 years ago, Christian Goldbach uh, conjecture every even integer greater than two can be represented by uh, prime numbers. But it is not proven yet. Numerically, they did something to the 18. Uh, and it's not infinity. Between infinity and 10 to 18. At least many, many numbers we have. Uh, a lot of conjecture, Collas conjecture, Riemann conjecture, Klein Mathematic Institute, Czech Cord Internet, MP versus MP, and now we have Stokes conjecture. Each Klei problem as a conjecture, like Riemann conjecture, is $1 million. Only one of them will appear so, so far with Poincare conjecture by Russian mathematician, Perelman. It solved the problem, but it didn't get to many items. This conjecture could be your uh, presentation topic. We will discuss what is conjecture, what kind of conjecture you can come bring to the class. It is very important. Not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Okay. Uh, I will give the date if you like. Fourth uh, of. October. We have to bring the conjectures, okay? 4th of October. Repeating 4th of October. Please bring the class some conjecture as part of your uh, mid uh, term project or presentation topic. You don't have to solve the uh, conjecture, then take the $1 million. Uh, I'm talking to you about just try to understand and represent it in a proper way. Call out uh Goldpa, Riemann and the other clay automatic institute problems or uh, find the 24 problems at the beginning of century David Hilbert has produced and proposed 24 problems 24 problems and uh, at the beginning of uh, 20th century and Seven problems proposed by Klein Mathematics Institute in May 2000. Where, what is the common in between these two lists? It is Riemann conjecture. So you can work on it, Riemann conjecture, as separate teams because it's very hard to explain. Uh, at least two teams can try to do that. Um, so it's about the prime numbers, it's about the structure behind the prime numbers. Um, it's about some theorems, it's about randomness, it's about music, uh, everything, okay? It's very difficult to prepare. Uh, try to understand the Riemann conjecture, it's not that easy. Collas uh, conjecture is very famous. It's not already, uh, although it's not listed in the Klein Mathematics list, but it's a good conjecture to work on it. So uh, elusive and so attractive, colossal project. Yeah. Or other ones, whatever. It's, but just bring the definition of contact to the class in the fourth of October. Uh, and after the definition, what's the difference between conjecture and statement? Predicative statement or compound statement it doesn't matter. Uh, and theorem between theorem and conjecture, there is a, uh, there are some sort of differences. Please bring it to me and give at least one or two examples. Okay, uh, you can use the Clay Institute or David Hilbert uh, problems or internet. A lot of conjecture. Yeah. 
couples? This is the uh, very important question for this photo of October. Then you can choose your 12 project presentation topic, what you want to do at the end of the semester. Well, it's very important part of your grade for participation because you will be a mathematician anyway and you have to learn at least the culture of the conjecture and theorem, axiom, etc. A real number is rational and Fernando is a very good definition term can express the quotient of two integers with a non-zero denominator. Very important. A real number that is not rational is irrational. The definition of irrationality is here. When you cannot write A over B, it is irrational. There are some examples here. Of course, 10 over 3 is rational. This is rational. This is rational. 7 is rational because 7 over 1. 0 is rational. 0 over 1. But 2 over 0 is not a number even. Cannot be rational or irrational. Because it's a not a number, you know. If it's not a number, it cannot be rational or irrational. Neither. Yeah? This is cyclic repeating decimals or recurring digital representation. It's all the same. You will see the repeating pattern. Uh, you can easily obtain this one by high school knowledge. Uh, and this is, of course, rational numbers. Cyclic numbers or repeating decimals. Is the rational numbers, don't worry. And the sum of any two rational numbers is rational because when you sum it up, you will obtain uh, when you integers multiplication and addition, you will get integer. Multiplication of integers give the integer. Integer divided by integer is definition of rational numbers, so basic algebra. Very good. Divisibility is a very important topic in mathematics because uh, you have to learn in terminology n is multiple of d or d is a factor. Factor of n, divisor of n, divides n, d over n, divides n. What does in 4 slash n 12 means 4 divides, divides 12 by factor of 2, 3, etc. You have to learn this uh, terminology, very important for you. For example, is 21 divisible by 3? Yeah, why not? Does 5 divide 40? Yeah, 8. Does 7 over 4? 7 divides 42? Yeah. It's, is 32 multiple of minus 50? Yeah, not the correct way. D is, you can say, it, let's say, minus 2 times of minus 60 is. Yeah, it's the multiple, yeah, you see. The 6 is factor of 54, yeah. How many factor of 54? Let me say. Uh, beside the, this question, okay, 6 times 9, 1. No other one? There is no other one, I think, right? Or 2 times 27, or 3 times 18, 3, 18, 2, 3, 18, and 27, and 6, and 9. All factors of 54. Is 7 is a factor of, oh yeah, minus 1 times. It's, it's not bothering us. Minus is okay. Divisor of 0. Uh, we can work on it. Why divisibility is important? Because divisibility is giving the uh, main decomposition of numbers. You can decompose the numbers and sets by uh, very important rules. And factor of prime numbers, factorization is the main topic of mathematics arithmetic. And it's very important. This is the unique factorization of integer terms. Every integer greater than one could be factorized by prime numbers and appropriate exponents. This is very important. One of the 
a couple of students in class, please prepare this importance of this one. Prime factorization. Very important for mathematics. This shows us prime are the atoms of the numbers. You can build anything, any numbers starting with the prime numbers. This is the proof of that. Any volunteer student will be getting a good grade for this prime factorization. Prime factorization showing the structural uh, evidence of actual prime numbers are the atoms of the numbers. Do this very important. And you can understand the music, you can understand the Riemann conjecture problem, etc. Cauchy remainder theorem is very basic and very, very important theorem. It's very simple, but it's very important. Why it's important? Because the name of the, this is the divisor, quotient, remainder, dividend. This is the important topic. Try to learn each term. Remainder is the main topic in some uh, modular arithmetic. Quotient is very important for even topological space. So, quotient is when you divide 6 by 2, quotient is 3. Dividend is 6, divisor is 2. Remainder is 0. And this notation, you have to 7 dv, div, and 2 means 3. Forget about the remainder. And 7 mod d, just remainder, 1, right? It's given an example here. Right? Let me show you. 32 div 9, what does in this notation is 3, just 3. What is mod? Mod means remainder. What is the remainder? 5. All right, very important. When you see the mod, just put the remainder. When you see the div, you have to say just the quotient, okay? This is the quotient, this is the remainder, don't forget it. All right, this is the quotient, this is the remainder. Let me repeat it. D is the quotient, and you divide this thing, you get the quotient. Forget about the remainder for D, and this one is remainder is seven. Remove every possible nine from the 32, and what, what you get is five. One, nine, two, nine, three, nine. All right, what you get? Five. Of course, remainder should be less than or from the division, right? Usually true. Two consecutive integer opposite, for example. of course. When you write consecutive numbers, you can see that two, three is one is out, the other one is even. Consecutive numbers uh, cannot have the uh, same parity or same oddity or same evenness. All right. And yes. Count from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4 is even, 5 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd, 6 is even, 7 is, is following the rule, right? The modular arithmetic is very important, very, very important. Two bases, well, constructive bases. Um, absolute value, you have to learn it by this equation. When it's positive, just x minus negative minus x. So absolute y always positive because negative multiplied negative is positive again. Triangle you got to use in the old proof in the next couple of weeks. This is very important. This is very important. Work on the conjecture, work on the prime numbers, on prime factorization, and also modular arithmetic. This is a very important topic for this. Contradiction or reductio absurdum is contraposition, the other name. 
this matter. This is very well known proof what it is used a lot. Suppose the statement to prove is false, that is, suppose that the negation of statement is true. Show that supposition is logically to a contradiction concrete the statement to prove. What does it mean? Is, and the, at the beginning, you change the statement as a false value and then prove it is a contradiction. A contradiction is appear at the end. What does it mean? That is a false uh, assumption at the beginning. And what does it mean? It says the opposite of this statement is correct. The statement proved to be true. That's why it's called proof by contradiction or proof by contraposition or ridicule the absurd. This is a Latin name. And at the beginning, you reverse the argument. Okay, at the beginning, you are reversing the argument and proving it's false and it's a contradiction, then it proves your original statement is true. And some operation number and irrational number, of course, is a re irrational number, but prove this is not that easy. But you can see that. Uh, this is the irrational number, this is the rational number, and this is the, what the theorem says us. If it is rational number, forget about the theorem. Theorem says R plus S is rational. And we, what's the negation of that? Negation is R plus S is rational. When we have the contradiction, the opposite is true, our uh, original conjecture is true. Right. All right. Let's do that. When you say this is rational number, when you obtain s, and you know this multiplication, subtraction, and all these subtraction and multiplication produce new integers, and so you still have integer uh, in numerator and integer in denominator. This definition of rational number, but s is rational, irrational number. So this is a big contradiction and cancels out this negation, this negation, and we left with this original theorem. Of course, this is easier than uh, direct proof. Of course, in especially that kind of uh, statements, because uh, definition of irrationality is not that easy. One of the biggest problem in the proof mechanism showing the something is irrational is very difficult. But you can do in a positive way. Proof by contradiction is very famous. Don't forget proof by contradiction. This is the best known thing of this. By contradiction, we say S, irrational number, irrational number is irrational number. Okay, but it shows us the irrational number can be written as a ratio of two integers. All right, it is forbidden for irrational numbers because irrational numbers cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. The theorem is proved very well. This is official formal proof. Write it down step by step, and everything should be precisely declared in the your proof in a mathematical way. This is the way uh, you can do it your proof for exam or final exam. Okay, not forget this formal proof. Every details, everything, definitions. We have to take. We have to say we take the negation. We obtain this. And we get the contradiction by applying these rules. Division of subtraction and multiplication gives an, a new integer. These integers divided by each other or ratio of two integers giving the rational numbers. This proof to S is irrational and constitute the contradiction. That's why the original statement is true. But this detail is needed in your paper. And whatever your report, presentation report, etc. Mathematics is the way you write in a structured way, not like literature or poem 
and etc. Clam is uh, the literal thing or normal. Uh, automatically, you have to do it in a proper way with proper equation, inequality, equations, definitions, and assumptions. Step by step, and uh, each line you have to be like programming or algorithm, say the algorithm format, you have to write it down every detail. This is, down you can learn mathematics, basically. The contraposition, the same, don't worry, the uh, extension of the same thing. It's nothing fancy here, but in that time, Tx and Qx is comes up, uh, but the same thing. Because proof by contradiction is a huge topic. You see, proof by contradiction. Uh, same sequence of steps, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And uh, work on this irrationality of square root of 2, very, very important, starting with that one. Segor in 2000, almost 2500 years ago. It's very important. We will discuss in the class in details. Very important proof. Euclid. Because irrationality of square root, everything in this class. Everything. Please work on it and we will discuss in the class. And try to produce your questions. What's the irrationality? What's the irrationality of square root? How can we prove it? Why almost 3000 years ago everybody uh, work on it. The, uh, what is the reason uh, behind this? And you know, uh, prime, twin prime conjecture is very, very important problem. Ternesto is younger and the youngest mathematician in the world, most intelligent man in the world, that someone says saying that is the, the first mathematician in the world. The trust. Please try to dig for the internet, put put his name, Terence Tao, and try to read and learn, okay? Future is, uh, in future, I think he will be much more famous than now. And his first contribution in mathematics, and he got the fifth medal, the T1 Prime's conjecture. And not, he, he can prove it, but he tried to prove some up to some moment, uh, up to some point. Tim prime, what does it mean prime? It's very easy. If P is prime, P plus 2 is prime. Like 3, 5, 5, 7 is Tim primes. And after 11, uh, 13 is Tim prime, of course. And how many Tim primes? We don't know. It's still not proved after 3000 years. But there has never come to a point, very good point, progressions. Say progressions, progressions, progressions. Think about what is progression. It's a very good question. Very famous mathematician. And this is your uh, one more almost homework or questioning this guy. Try to learn three primes. Why this is important? Riemann conjecture. Now we are stopped like very stupid problems. Very, very important questions. A programming, nothing fancier than this, you know. If you learn the logic, if you learn if then as, if then as statement, and this is it. Only thing you have to understand the uh, while and if close verbs and some syntax relating with your C language, Python language, or uh, some graph and some tree tables and some programming tricks, etc. Algorithms, uh, I give the division algorithm here, I put the sign on it. And great common divisor algorithms. For 
this is very important algorithms finding factorization finding GCD discover multiple or great common divisor this is very important because the way you can improve your programming skills starting from now why it start with the prime factorization when you do the prime factorization you are able to very easily understand GCD and this common multiple or great common divisor a very important topic in the factorization topics why it's important uh, because it's just not giving the factorization or the composition but it's giving the idea how prime numbers are important much more much more important than anything why we are using prime numbers why it is the atoms of the numbers this is uh, the way you can learn it okay and you can run in the any programming language including method or whatever you have and this algorithm you can check it right for example what is the discover multiples of these two what, what do you think what do you think and write it down all right prove some try to prove improve some rules if i give the prime factorization how can you find lcm and gcd there's there are some certain rules for prime factorization and these two how can you do it and try to learn and in class i will ask this lcm this common multiple and great common divisor yeah but okay if i gave you the prime factorization like here in the part what will you do you will take the common ones or you will take the offspring or etc uh, i will ask in the question and the class uh, some questions relating with prime factorization very very important and how can we find this common multiple etc okay very structural way after factorize these numbers two three numbers sometimes four numbers depending on your problem and then find the common divisor or find the common multiple but using prime factorization have a nice week and thanks a lot see you